I want you to concentrate, guys. This is a very, very important thing because problems will be asked based on this. So y is equal to a sin omega t is the displacement of the particle. Displacement with respect to time. Can I call it like this? It is a displacement with respect to time. Now, if I differentiate this with respect to t, what will I get? It is d by dt of a sin omega t. Yes. Hmm. So, what, which will come out of the derivative? It is a times d by dt of sin omega t. Sin omega t. Yes. So, what do we need to apply? We need to apply. There is a rule for it. What is it called as? Chain rule, sir. Yes, tell me how to do, Rohan. Continue. Derivative of sign. Cos, sir. Cos, Cos of how much? Cos of how much? Omega t. Very good. Cos omega t into... Into what should I do? Derivative of omega. You need to differentiate omega. Okay. So don't call it as derivate, call it as differentiate. Okay. Derivate is an output of differentiation. Okay, sir. So A into cos omega t into. Yeah. So derivative of omega t is how much? Is is there a delay in my voice? No, sir. Okay. No, so A cos omega t into how much is it? Derivative of omega t is omega. omega. So this so this will be A omega into cos omega t. This expression I showed it in the previous class itself. So if you differentiate the instantaneous displacement of a particle with respect to time, you get the instantaneous velocity of the particle, which is given by A omega into cos omega t. Accept it. So, Vp is equal to A omega into cos omega t. Uh, let me call this as expression number 2. So, this I already showed it in the previous class. But the point that I didn't show in the previous class is, if I take y is equal to A sin omega t as 1, is there a possibility for me to write the velocity of the particle in terms of displacement? That's what I'm going to say. So, what I'm trying to say here is, I wrote the velocity of the particle as a function of time. Now I have a question. Why can't I write it as a function of displacement itself? So if I want to write it, then Vp will be equal to A omega into... How can I write cos omega t in terms of sign? Sine 90 minus omega t. Uh, but there is no use, no? Yeah, that is right. But in this context, it will not be useful. Because I have cos omega t. I want cos omega t in terms of sin omega t. What is the relation between cos theta and sin theta? There is a very famous identity. Cos square. Sin square theta equal to 1. Is equal to 1. So then cos theta can be written as root of 1 minus sin square theta. In the case... Theta is nothing but cos omega t. Root of, sorry, omega t. Can I write it as 1 minus sin square omega t? Now see, from 1, I know that sin omega t will be equal to y by a. What I did is, we know that y is equal to a sin omega t. So sin omega t will be y by a. I take this and substitute it here. If I do that, then what will I get? Vp will be equal to a times omega into root of 1 minus sin square omega t. That is y square divided by a square. So a omega into root of a square minus y square divided by a. This and this will get cancelled. So what will be the answer? Omega times root of a square minus y square. So what I'm trying to say is the velocity of the particle itself has two formulae. One in terms of 
time and the other in terms of displacement depending on the problem you need to apply it. I'll explain the importance of this also. Okay, that, let's see if that makes sense. Please make a note till here. I have a doubt. Tell me. VP is speed of the particle, right, sir? Sorry? VP is speed of particle, right? The voice is breaking, Rohan. Sorry. Sir, so, uh, VP is speed of particle. Yeah, VP is speed of particle, yes. Speed of the particle in simple harmonic. Sir, so, can box, sir? Sorry? Can you box, sir? Can you try to up, sir? I didn't get you. Can you box, sir? Can you scroll up, up a little bit? A scroll up? Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Just a minute, guys. Just a minute. I have some network issue. Just a minute. You keep popping. Yeah, is it better now? Yes, sir. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, tell me. Sir, here in the last equation, we are getting mm -hmm. the velocity of particle, right, sir? How is it displaced? Yes. Velocity of the particle in terms of displacement. That's what I told you. I'll explain the logic behind this expression. Okay, now I'm going okay. to ask some questions. If you answer that, you'll get... You just try to answer them, you'll get your answer. See, suppose I take, okay, since I'm using Y, let's say there is a particle which is vibrating in the simple harmonic motion. Let me call this as the mean position. Okay, these are the extreme. There's another extreme position. So if this is taken as zero, this point will be A, this point will be minus k. So what do I mean by zero? I'm considering that point to be the origin. Means I'm taking that as the reference point. Correct? What would be the velocity of the particle at mean position? Okay. Now see. I'll put it like this. Mean position y is equal to 0, y is equal to a, y is equal to minus a. Okay. What is going to be the velocity of the particle at mean position? I've given you the expressions also. Your work is only to substitute. A, it's omega a. Right? What is going to be the velocity of the particle at extreme 
I am not restricting it to position, extreme positions. What will happen? Be zero, sir. It is zero. See, that's what the mathematics is telling us. Now let's logically think. Suppose an object has to start from here. Is it not necessary that it has the maximum kinetic energy? Or can I say, should it not have the maximum velocity? Now we'll try to connect all the dots, okay? So the object is trying to move from mean position towards which position? Towards the extreme position. So here, if you observe, omega a is the maximum velocity possible for the particle. Please make a note, guys. Because omega is a constant, a is a constant. Nothing can be greater than that, those values. a is the maximum position. So it is the maximum velocity that is possible. So the expression that we derived is telling us that the velocity of the particle is maximum at the mean position. Okay, accept it. So it is maximum at the mean, uh, mean position. At the extreme position, it is becoming zero. Now let's try to connect all the dots. For a particle's velocity to become zero at a particular point when it has started with maximum value, should the object retard or accelerate? Retard. It should retard. So that's what simple harmonic motion is also telling us. So when the particle started at here with maximum velocity, the acceleration of the particle is always towards its mean position. Right, small a is acceleration, capital A is amplitude, don't get confused. So acceleration of the particle is towards its mean position and the velocity of the particle is in opposite direction. So in this case, is the object retarding or accelerating? It's retarding, sir. It is obviously retarding, right? So that is the reason why at the extreme position, the velocity of the particle is going to become zero. So this equation is right. Okay, you can ask me a question. Can we do the same thing with respect to time period also? Can we do the same thing with time period? Because I should get the same expression by using this also. Right, it is then mathematically both are going to be right. Now see, what I will do is, I will prefer a small table. 